Welcome to Choices, a production of First Assembly of God, LMP Durban Street, Workmanville. We're so happy that you've joined us. And as always, we want to encourage you to view Choices as a family. The panelists continue the discussion looking at a super abundant life. We encourage you to stay tuned and be blessed. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is great to be alive, to see and to experience all the wonderful things that are happening around us. You that are looking at this program, we want you to know that you're precious and that you're valuable. We want you to know also that God loves you, we love you and we respect you. We want to encourage you to pull the family a little closer. Amen. Shout out, invite a friend, let them know the choices is on again. And we pray that as we continue our discussion from the Word of God, how to destroy this manner mentality and to enjoy God's wonderful superabundance, that your whole life will be challenged, your family will be blessed. God bless you as you stay with us for a few minutes. Amen. You know, superabundance is attainable even in an environment of hopelessness. Hopelessness produces pain and even disillusionment. Mm -hmm. But that's not the end. A major event happened in this country at the National Sports Hall last Friday. Where believers gathered together in their thousands and they called upon God. You see, if you establish a relationship with God, He will hear you. Amen. You know the scripture says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, Amen. and His ears are attentive to their cry. So whatever you might be going through, know that you can tap into the source, the greatest resource that is capable of taking you out of that hopeless situation. That resource is our shepherd. His name, Jesus Christ. In him, super abundant life is surely attainable. You know, John captures a very powerful and picturesque image of Jesus presenting a very powerful truth. You know, in the words of Jesus, he likens, he provides a, an analogy sort of, of the Good Shepherd. And um, he describes this entire world like a pasture. And it's amazing. In this pasture, the common denominator is sheep. You have a lot of sheep all over. But then there are two leaders, two images providing leadership. In the words of Jesus, one, a very powerful force of a leader is one who covers up. He's a master of deception. You really don't know him. You really don't see him. Jesus calls him the thief. <laughs> and Jesus not only identifies him, Jesus says something about what he does, what, he, what is his mission, mission upon the face of the earth. This entire earth is like a pasture. And then he said, and there's another leader, the good shepherd. He said the thief, and well, this is in John chapter 10, the thief cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The essence of hopelessness. Now, I have a feeling that once you are in territory controlled by, the, by the, this, uh, this figure, this thief, you'll know because you live in a constant state of control and manipulation and yeah. abuse and deception. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, why is it I can't make it? You know, you're watching, you're watching at us right now. And I like how Jesus has the ability to reduce very complex issues to very simple yeah. frames for us to look and understand. And he said, this is all this guy does. He kills potential. 
He kills life. Yeah. He, he, he reduces your life to nothing. He steals abilities, opportunities, like he did to Esau. Like he almost did to Jabez. This is this thief and he's, he's, he was operating in antiquity and the guy is working in modernity. <laughs> Still doing the same thing. He hasn't changed. His, his modus operandi has remained the same. Killing, stealing, destroying. And then Jesus said, listen, there is also the good shepherd. Because if we only had that kind of leadership, it would have been extremely depressing to live in this environment. And he introduced himself as the good shepherd and he says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Our lives here this evening are testimony to the fact that there is in this in this whole this this whole equation, we were not always like this. <laughs> but we met yeah. the good yeah. shepherd. <laughs> and when you meet the good shepherd, he dismantles the control yeah. of the thief mm -hmm. and he introduces you to the life that he spoke about. And we want to encourage you to explore and to experience what we are talking about. You, the yoke of the of the oppressor is strangling, you know, and um, anyone who is under that yoke, you struggle for life, struggle to actually make it. Yeah. Jabez is a good example, but you know, I, I love I love the word of God. If you are in trouble, shout for help, call for help, yeah. and so the word of God says, call. And I will hear and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. But the, the important thing is that if you feel you are being strangled, you are being suffocated, that this man of mentality is taking your life out, it's a good opportunity to call on him for help. He will surely help you. But that, that shows clearly the operation of the thief. If everything around you is falling apart, and such were some of us, yeah. you know, we would have experienced a whole load of destruction. Everything seems to be going wrong. And then you heard about this Good Shepherd. It's the Good Shepherd that brings about the transformation in our lives as we seek to hear different instructions. Because what you hear can become what you do. Things that we listen to, if it's coming from the thief, you become a thief. <laughs> if you listen to instruction from the good shepherd, you start to shepherd other people to that same pasture that you are feeding from. Why not listen to the voice of the shepherd? You know, when we consider the, the, the metaphor, the, the whole picture that is before us, you know, we, we take into consideration the spiritual dynamics of these two different forces. You know, and when we think about the thief, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But but the, the, the picture that is put before us, you know, so many times we, we, we gravitate it because unknowingly, we don't know what is happening behind the scenes, spiritually. So he presents himself as a deceiver, and he presents things to us that we would want to gravitate to, because it's in our nature to do those things. The Word of God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we thank God today that, you know, we have one who is concerned about us. He said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So when, this is another dynamics we are looking at now. There is hope. You know, in this situation, there is hope. Whatever situation you might be in today, there is hope for you. You know, He has come to give us abundant life. There is peace, everlasting peace. Mm -hmm. There is joy, there's love, you know, there's so much things that are available to us if we will only gravitate to the life-giving source, which is Jesus himself. You know, I saw a movie, I like to talk about movies. <laughs> I saw a movie once, and named The Usual Suspects. And it's amazing and something that was said that really, you know, caught my attention by a killer in the movie. He said one of the greatest trick 
that the devil has ever managed to pull off in this world is that he has, been, he has managed to convince people that he does not exist. And uh, I believe if you're going to move into superabundance, recognition is important. Amen. Um, lots of people don't even know why they're in the state that they're in. Mm -hmm. And they actually believe that oh, this is normal. Mm -hmm. But there's a thief out there mm -hmm. that is depriving you from attaining all your goals, all your objectives, all the things that God would want you to attain in life. And uh, you know, we heard he's a deceiver, he's a scamp, he's a smart man. And therefore, the only way we can um, actually get to where God wants us to go is to hold on to the shepherd, the good shepherd, the one who has abundant life for you, the one who has good things in store for you. You must recognize that there's a Jesus out there who wants to see you prosper and to do well. There's an Same escape God. route. There's an escape route for you, man. You might have been held captive by the habits, by your habits. You, 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 you do every day, some things you do every day and you don't know how to come out. But Jesus has made a way for you today. You might be listening to this program right now. I was once in that same situation and I thought I was doing well. And everything started to fall apart. And then I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You could know him today and you could experience that abundant life. The Bible says he has come that you might have life mm -hmm. and have it more abundantly. You, yes, you might have life today. Mm -hmm. It could begin from today. There is an escape route. Use it. Go to the Lord Jesus Christ and see him work in your life for you to fulfill purpose. This same good shepherd at another place told the story of a persistent widow. And this parable to this end, he concluded that men are always to pray and not to faint. Yeah. We alluded to earlier of the event that took place at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall, where we, as a church, as the call out, as the people of God, went before God for this nation because this is a time and a season. You know, I would like to read for you this very verse of scripture from the Message Bible. It says, Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. He said, there was once a judge in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing, nothing for the people. A widow in that city kept after him. My rights are being violated. Protect me. You can call all over for protection from this thief. But it's when you go to God, <laughs> then you will truly receive protection. Because God knows everything about you. Amen. And he wants the best for us yeah. in this nation as a country or whichever nation. You see? God knows the boundaries of our habitation. Yeah, he and yeah. God wants the best for us. And I want you, instead of complaining, go to God with thanksgiving. Praise God from where you are at this moment. You see, complaints will breed scarcity. <laughs> but praise will attract the abundance. Yeah, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. On, on last, uh, the 25th of May, of May right uh, from 9, 9 p.m. right on to 5 a.m. on Saturday morning, where folk who, uh, who understand the way of this deceiver, who have watched and endured hopelessness, a deepening sense of, of fear and doubt and uh, cowardice and a whole host of other things. You, you can describe it because you live there. But when you go to this sheep, this shepherd, he describes himself, he describes himself as a door. <laughs> when you go to him, and you know, it's, it's, it's such a powerful picture, but for those of us who live in modern times, um, we need to explain that. But when he was speaking, everybody understood what he was talking about, because that was their life. And the shepherd stood at the door. 
and all the sheep passed through and he checked them to see which was wounded, whatever needs that they had. And that's what he does, the good shepherd. Yeah. He checks us out individually. Yeah. And the, the thief is trying to climb over <laughs> the walls of, of, of that enclosure to see how he could harass yeah. the sheep but, and, and destroy them and kill them because that's his purpose. His purpose is to squeeze the living and the life out of each one. But this good shepherd will protect. Mm -hmm. And like Jabez, he connected. And that is so powerful. We must connect to our God. And yeah. how do we connect to him? We connect to him through our relationship, yeah. through what is called prayer. Yeah. And we need to do it more often. We need to have a, a, a kind of resoluteness to remain in touch with him. You notice how we walk around with cell phones? Because we want to be in touch. <laughs> yeah. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, as a young manager in this country, um, I can't remember that we had cell phones. My son asked me, how is it y'all used to communicate? It's amazing how we communicate. <laughs> You know, 25, 30 years ago, it's amazing. How did we communicate? Mm -hmm. How were we able to get in touch? I remember the first time I saw technology in operation in 19... When, when was Jonestown? 1970, 1978, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, yeah. When you had that um, massacre there. And um, I saw the whole notion of a wire photo. Uh, the foreign stringers, the reporters came and they sent, they sent this photograph over the telephone, you know, attached the cables and they used that technology. It was amazing to us in the third world. But those guys already had technology that we didn't, we didn't even have. And while we were struggling to get a still photograph from Kaituma, these, they already had photographs wired and published in, in California. And I, you know, I was wondering as a young man, how is it they're able to do that? They were connected to technology. The greatest network in this world is operated and controlled by God, the Good yeah. Shepherd. Yeah. And the thing is, we have to stay connected. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the best and the only way to remain connected is through prayer. Yes. And I tell you something, even the thief can't prevent you yeah. Yeah. once you become resolute. Yeah. And when you start talking to him, calling upon his name. Yeah. The sense of hopelessness with which you're engulfed with presently, the back of that thing will break because the, the good shepherd says, I have come that they might have life. So you could be a lawyer and you could be homeless. There's uh, hopeless. There are people who operate under this sense that perhaps if you're a professional, you're going to be all right. Well, the difference between a professional and those who are artisans and people who don't have jobs and, and high education and so on is that the professional learns how to mask his suffering and his pain because, you know, image is everything. Image is everything. So you learn how to mask it with a jacket and a tie and um, with, 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 you know, a whole set of other things. The ordinary man doesn't understand how to mask because he, he goes in the street, he or she, and they remonstrate and people say they're crazy and, uh, and, and so on. But hopelessness covers, you might be amazed how many people are experiencing this sense of hopelessness, yet they are attempting to lead. That is how the thief controls. Yeah, they know the deep inside, they know, man, I don't know if this thing will work, but people expect me to go there and do it. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're operating. But you see, there's a better way. Amen. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life. You know, when you don't involve the initiator of the plan, I'm thinking about marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, God is the initiator of marriages. Mm -hmm. But the thief has come to destroy your marriage. Mm -hmm. He's come to destroy your life. And when you don't involve the initiator of the plan, then you leave room for the outside force, the thief, to come in and to destroy that marriage. That is why you can't leave him out. You have to connect to him so that he can strengthen your marriage. The good shepherd that is. The good shepherd. Yeah. You have to connect to him. 
or else the thief will come and he will create havoc. Once you have a good relationship, it is tough for a day to pass yeah. without uh, connecting, you know. Yeah. My wife not hearing from me for a day or I don't hear from her. You all know what happened, why you don't give a call, why you why you don't check. Even those who are, you know, if you have you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, you, you understand the importance of connecting. And if you and I don't connect to the, the, the good shepherd, we don't benefit from what he has in store for us. Guyana is a place that is many times dominated by oppression and fear and Guyanese need to connect to a source that is above the, 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 the fray, above some of the people who attempt to lead us, who themselves are, are in a state of confusion. And that source is God himself. And so on the 25th, I found it amazing how the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah, the, the supernatural, how the supernatural engulfed the environment and provided ministry to the people both present and to this nation. And so we need to connect to that source. Beloved, God will bring about justice for his people who cry out to him day and night. Those are not my words. That is the Bible, Luke 18, verse 6 and 7. God will bring justice. So you might be going through a situation that is designed by the thief. Don't worry with the thief. Cry out to God. Imagine Jesus told the, Jesus told the people to listen to the unjust judge. You know? Because of this woman persistent, this widow persist, persistently, her persistence, she went before God and she cried out day and night. And I want you to know that this is not something that we experience here that is a one-time shot. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We want to go into our homes now. We went to the National Sports Hall, the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall, and we cry out for Guyana. Now it must continue. We must do so in our own environment, in our own space, in our own situation, in our own workplace. We must cry out to God, and God is going to bring justice. I say again, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. You know the psalmist David, he was a shepherd himself. And I remember if you read through First Samuel, you recognize that at one time a lion came and a, and a bear came and he fought. He fought them off because he was actually going out there to protect the sheep, that's the whole concept of, of a shepherd. And you know, I look at how you would have coined Psalm 23, a psalm that we know very well. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This is the good shepherd we're talking about. Even though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This could only happen if you say like David, the Lord is my shepherd. Life is made up of a number of priorities of which you will have to choose yeah. the most important and come down a line. So it's very important that you choose God as your first priority. And having done that, you will see life in a different perspective. You know what the scripture says about being connected with God in Isaiah 66 11. For you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast, 
you will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. So I'm sure that after the 25th at this post all those who have prayed and seek God to be connected with him, you will be nourished. Like a, like a mother is nursing her child. Yeah. So it's very so it's, so it's so most important that you seek the shepherd and stay connected with him. Sir, yeah. mom, your your protection um, does not lie in men. Yeah. Um, if you're going to really and truly be protected, you need to tap into that source, and that's the shepherd. Um, Jesus himself said, "The hired hand will run away. The hired hand, the one who's paid." To protect you, you're paying for your protection. When trouble comes, he will run away, they will run away, and you'll still be in your same in, in your state. And so it is important for you to hold on to God because in God you just can't lose. Amen. When I think about the goodness that God has done for me, my soul cried out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for blessing me. <laughs> Come in. Coming to Psalms 6 to 5. 12. David, the man of God, you let men ride over our head. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out to a place of abundance. Yeah. If you stay with God, you will receive abundance. Yeah. You no, know Esau, let God call to live. Jabez, when he saw his state, called. Yeah, and God heard him and recognized him. Call upon him. He will hear and answer your prayer. For he's touched by the very feelings of our infirmities. The good shepherd, Jabez found him in pain. He didn't know he need a door. He needed a guide and a provider. Mm -hmm. Classical traits of the good shepherd. He saw. He needed a way. He trusted the arm of flesh. He wished away. God, what a terrible thing to do. Sometimes we only refer to ourselves and our friends. We don't have any source higher than our companions. There is, however, a source greater than your colleagues. And he is the door. Amen. He is the good shepherd. Amen. And very many times we have to go above familiar. We have to go above these situations to tap into him. Rest assured, he's available. And it's up to you to tap into him. We'll see you next week. God bless you. part of Choices, remember you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the SIP, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.